Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Hey, my name's Philip Brown, and I've got this regular octagon with these three little purple periwinkle triangles inside of it. Challenge problem is to figure out what is the ratio of the shaded to the unshaded regions of this thing right here. It's a pretty cool problem. I really enjoyed doing it. Here's how we're going to do this video. We're going to share the details, run you through a couple clues, then unpack the solution. And if you're a teacher and you'd like to use this in your classroom to teach uh, apathom, area of polygons, all that kind of stuff. I'll share some links with you so you can download and use these things in your classrooms. In the meantime, if you want to navigate through any of these portions, uh, you can do so in the description. There's some timestamps there for you. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the details here. All of these little red points, they're the midpoints of the side links, and they create uh, some triangles, these periwinkle blue purple triangles right here. We have three of them. Those are what are considered the shaded region and everything else like here, 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 and here. Those are the unshaded regions. So our job is to figure out the ratio of shaded to unshaded. All right. So we're going to dive into clue number one here in about three seconds. So go ahead and pause the video and give it a pro give it a go. Try it out and let me know how you did. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. All right. So clue number one, I think it's always a great idea to start off by defining what it is that you're looking for. So here, we're trying to find shaded versus unshaded. So write that out as a formula. You've got triangle A plus B plus C, this triangle and this triangle and this triangle. Those are the shaded regions. Now to find the unshaded region, you could, right? You could find the individual area of each of these other shapes. This one right in here between A and B is kind of ugly. Or I think the easier way to do it, take the entire octagon and subtract those three and that would be the unshaded so that's clue number one we're going to move on to clue number two here in just a moment uh go ahead and pause the video right and give it a try again and let me know how you did also hey what does this shape look like to you leave me a comment let me know all right so clue number two check this out uh we've got triangle b and its height is different than the height of the others. In fact, triangle B is got a height that's really related, very closely related to perhaps the most important part of a polygon. Now, the height of triangle C, you can see right here, is going to be that distance right there. So what's the relationship between that important distance, it has a name, and the height of triangle B? Hopefully those will get you started on those two triangles right there, right? All right, we're going to move on to, tri to triangle number three. Clue number three here in about three seconds. So pause the video, give it a shot. Hey, drop me a comment. If you like this problem, you're having a good time, I'd really, really love to hear from you. All right, so clue number three. Uh, there's a relationship between triangle A and triangle C. It's kind of an important one. Can you see what's going on here? So I just took this shape from A and moved it down there. Dang, did you see that? You might want to pause the video and play that again. Go ahead and pause the video now, though, because we're going to start getting into the solution. Well, I guess right now. All right, here we go. Now, before we dive into it, there's one thing that I want to put in the forefront of your mind because this part can be a little tricky. Uh, of course, the area of a triangle is one half base times height, and the base and the height, they're perpendicular. Unless you're using the sine formula for area, Base and height are perpendicular. So in a right triangle, that's really easy to see. Now, in an isosceles triangle like this one right here, which is actually what we have um, for, um, well, the central triangle or the main triangle of a polygon, uh, it's by isosceles. And that's pretty easy to see the perpendicular height like that because it's kind of inside of it. But our triangles, two of them anyway, uh, A and C, as we labeled them earlier, well, they're obtuse. They look kind of like this. And the height is kind of a funky looking thing because the height of these kinds of triangles kind of goes in a way, looks like it's outside of the triangle. So you either do it and it looks like this, or you could do it and it kind of looks like this over here. Either way, those heights are kind of tricky to find for those kinds of obtuse triangles. Um, but all three of these triangles, they have the exact same area, even though they don't look like it. All right. So let's keep that in the forefront of our mind as we start to explore some of this. All right. So our job is to find shaded versus unshaded, right? What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off with our defining our parameters, right? So the shaded versus unshaded is going to be A plus B plus C, triangle A, B, and C, right? Here, here, and here. And the numerator divided by the entire octagon, 
minus those three. That would give us what's left over would be these one, two, three, four unshaded regions, the ones that aren't periwinkle, right? So we're going to start off with that. That's going to give us a target. Now, let's go ahead and start by exploring triangle B. Triangle B, turns out its height is double of the apothem. Right now, if you don't remember what the apothem is, the apothem is from the center to the center of the midpoint of one of the sides. So the apothem is the perpendicular bisector of a side, and it goes through the center of the entire polygon. Right, so that would be the apothem there, and the height of triangle B is well, the apothem would be that from here to the center, and we have one more from here to here, so it's double. So the height. Of triangle B is double of the apothem. So that's a pretty good clue right there. Now, triangle C, well, it's one of those ugly ones I was talking about where the height is kind of misleading. So if we draw the apothem here, check this out. That perpendicular bisector of this side, right? That's perpendicular. This apothem is perpendicular to the base of this triangle. What about its height? So check this out. Dang, the apothem is the height of triangle C, even though it doesn't look like it. So this side here, it's parallel to this. So, yeah, that's the height. Man, that's kind of a weird thing. So triangle C, its height is the apothem. Triangle B, its height is double the apothem. So that's kind of interesting, right? That's kind of counterintuitive for, for triangle C anyway. Well, let's go ahead and start talking about some formulas and, you know, the area. So triangle C, it's going to be one half base times height, of course. Uh, the base is, we'll call it X, the side of the, right, one of the sides of this octagon, we'll say that's X, and then the height would be the apothem, whereas triangle B would be one half base times height, right, base being X again, but the height being twice of the apothem, so two times the apothem. So therefore, we know that triangle B is twice as big as triangle C. So 2 times C equals B. 2 times triangle C equals the area of triangle B. So we're going to tuck that away up here for future reference. Now let's talk about, well, let's talk about the entire, the entire octagon, shall we? So we know that the side length is X. Let's go ahead and clean up the inside a little bit here and just draw these, these little triangles. Now, if we have the apothem there, and we find the area of this little triangle right there, one half base times height, well, that would be one half X times the apothem. That's the same as triangle C. So these triangles right here are the same as triangle C. Now, these triangles that we're starting with, these kind of blue color here, those are important because there are eight of them. They are identical. They make up the area of the entire octagon. I don't know if you remember that or not. It's kind of a big deal in geometry, right? So we have all eight of those. They're kind of cool. The central angle is this angle right here. It's 360 divided by N. So, you know, 360 divided by eight would give you this angle right here. Anyway, that is it right there. So therefore we know that eight times one half X times the apothem, eight times C is the entire area of the octagon. So let's go ahead and tuck that away for future reference, shall we? Now let's look at our last little triangle. The last piece of the puzzle is going to be triangle A. Well, because this is the midpoint, we know that the base of A is half of X. We said the sides were X, the sides of the polygon were X, so half of X would be the base of triangle A. Now the height... Do you see that the height of A is the same as the height of C? It's the apothem again. So if we do the perpendicular bisector of the side, it goes right through the center. And if you look, that's the height of triangle A. So this, this line connecting these midpoints is parallel to the side. So everything's squared up. This is perpendicular right here. The apothem is perpendicular to the base. So the height is once again the apothem. So what we have is we have for triangle A, we have one half base times height. The base is half of X and the apothem. So if we clean that up, that would be X over four times the apothem. Now, since C is X over two times the apothem, then we know that C is twice as big as A. So 2A equals C. So let's go ahead and put that up there where we can use it right here. 
All right. So now we've got all of the pieces of information. We've got an expression for C, B, and A, as well as the entire octagon. So we're going to start plugging some stuff in here and see what kind of math and magic happens, right? So we know this is true. 2A equals C, right? We also know that 2C equals B. So let's do a little substitution right there. Since 2A is equal to C and C is right here, let's put 2A right there, shall we? So 2 times 2A is equal to B. So 4 times A is equal to B. So triangle B is 4 times as big as triangle A. All right, so we got that. That's kind of useful right here, so we'll put this here. So we have A, C is 2A, B is 4A. All right, so now <clears throat> our octagon, it's 8 times C. All right, we found that earlier. 8 times C is the octagon, but C is 2 times A. So we're going to plug in 2 times A right here, right? So 8 times 2 is 16, so 16A is the entire octagon. All right, so here's what we've got then, right? We know that... A is the area of A, and then B is 4A, C is 2A, and the entire octagon is 16A. So starting with our formula right here, let's start plugging in some stuff, right? So B is 4A, C is 2A, right? Let's do the same thing in the denominator, add those up, um, you know, right? 1 plus 4 plus 2, that's 7, right? So 7A and 7A right here, and 16A, so 7 and 16, the difference of those is 9. The A's reduce, and we get wonderful 7 ninths. So the area of the shaded region is 7 ninths. So, yeah, that's a pretty cool result. I think this problem was really, really fun. I had a, I really did have a great time putting this together. I can't emphasize how much time I spent on it, and I absolutely loved it. I learned a lot about GeoGebra and uh, had a really one, wonderful, fantastic time. So, hey, uh, I got a message for some teachers about using this in just a second. But if you did like this video, hey, do all the good stuff the cool kids are doing. Like, subscribe, comment, share, all that kind of stuff. Check out my blog, uh, yeah, thebeardedmathman.substack.com, my website, onteachingmath.org. I got all kinds of good stuff there for teachers. Um, I really do appreciate you guys, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Now, those of you who are teachers, I'm going to show you uh, my website right here because uh, I've got some resources for you that you can use. As you can see, this is my website. I'll leave a link to it in the description. When this video hits YouTube, the next blog post will be uh, on this problem. But here's the most recent. And all of these, in each of these, there is, if you open it up, uh, there's going to be some resources you can use that are linked. So it walks you through the whole problem. I do them for fun, but you can download a student handout. You can download a, a Google Forms quiz so students can do this on their own. There's a PowerPoint. For this one that we're talking about today, I've created this worksheet right here so students can work on the problem together. They're going to learn a lot about the apothem, how to find it. So I would imagine I would use this for students that have already taken geometry, but maybe have forgotten. Runs them through all kinds of exercises. Like here, they're going to be finding, uh, they're going to be verifying the answer, uh, given different sets of information. And then there's another challenge problem at the end. I think that's kind of fun. Also, my Substack has a weekly problem. You can read about them all there. So I'll leave links to all that in the descriptions, but I just wanted to share these things with you. Try to get some students doing math just for the fun of it, not for extra credit, not because they have to. It can really kind of turn the whole dynamic on its head. Anyway, hey, I thank you guys for watching and sticking with me through all this. I know it was kind of a long video, but uh, until next time, I hope you have a great day.